Hello, this is Justin from The Tech Train here, and I've got a quick tutorial today in Microsoft Excel on how to use the SUMIF function. A lot of people don't even know this exists or don't quite know how to work uh, with this function. It's a really useful one, offers a great deal of advantages. If you find yourself using the IF function a lot, this will make a great deal of difference to you. So I'm going to show you three examples of how to use the sum if function and why it provides such a huge benefit. The first example is a simple budget. So here we have the months down the left hand side and then the amount of money either made or lost in the right hand side. So we see that these months here we had a profit and in these months a loss and then a profit, some more losses and so on. Now, of course, to work out the net result at the end of the year, we could simply put in a function such as equals sum, highlight all of those numbers and press enter. So that tells us that at the end of the year, we had a net profit of 1,198. But that's not the whole story. How much did we actually make in positive income and how much were our losses in total? That seems to be a little harder to do and you certainly can't do it with an equals sum formula. Over here you'll see I do have a table set up that shows me that exact breakdown. So the profit here that I see is just simply the positive numbers from this column added together. So rather than taking all of the numbers, it just looks at those that happen to be above zero and adds those together. So 3,289 are these numbers here, or the positive amounts added together. Similarly, in the loss row here, that formula, a sum if formula, adds up all of the negative amounts. So it adds up all the amounts that are less than zero. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to simply remove those three uh, cells there and do this from scratch. So first of all, the profit. How do we add up all of the positive amounts? Well, of course, we're using equals sum if, which basically means add up if. So add up something if it meets certain criteria. Now you'll see that in the little tooltip down below we have three arguments or three parameters. The range, where are we looking? First of all, criteria, what is it we're looking for? And then the sum range, which is optional in some cases, what is it we're adding up? So the range, first of all, where are we looking? We're looking in these cells here. So I highlight those and then I put a comma ready for the next argument, which is the criteria. So that's where I want the formula to look. What is it I'm looking for? Well, I'm looking here, profit, anything that's greater than zero. So I put this in speech marks, so anything greater than zero, or speech marks greater than zero, speech marks, that's the criteria. And if it finds anything in that range, which is greater than zero, then what am I adding up? Well everything in that range that meets that criteria. So I select that again. Press enter and there we are. That now is the amount of money that is made from all the positive values. And we can see that if I was to change one, let's say I'll change June from a, uh, 45 to 145, we'll see this amount go up by 100 pounds as well. There we are up to 3,389. But if I was to change a negative amount, say minus 321 to minus 221, then you'll see that this amount doesn't change. That's not affected because this formula is only looking for values that are greater than zero. So to do the loss then, we type in again equals sum if. Where am I looking? Well, I'm looking at all of that bunch of cells there. What am I looking for? Anything which is less than zero. So again, I put this in speech marks and I'm looking for anything that is less than zero. Put a comma and now where are we wanting to add up? Well, again, it's everything that's in that column that meets that criteria. Close my brackets and there we are. The total losses, so that plus that plus that plus that plus that, totals 1,191. And if I take the April amount and I change that back to minus 321, 
you'll see that the losses change. That number just went up, but the profit, of course, has remained the same. So each of these formulas are looking at the same block of cells, but are only adding up those cells which contain something that matches the criteria. So for my net at the bottom here, I just simply have to add up the profit. So it equals that plus the loss. And there we are. My net at the end of the year is 1,298. Uh, 1, That's the first example. Let's look at a second example where some if can be really useful. So here I have some office supplies. So I've been buying quite a lot of pens and pencils and rulers and so on. And you can see the number of items that I have purchased. So I've bought 114 pencils there, 184 pens some more pencils, 112 of them later on, 12 staplers. So that's the amount of items, or the quantity of items that I have bought. Uh, these are the different suppliers. So you'll see that I bought 114 pencils from Office Solutions, although later on I bought 112 pencils from a group called Pennsylvania. Um, I don't know if that company exists, but it ought to. So there we have all the different types of uh, equipment, the quantities and the suppliers. Over here, what I've got is a spreadsheet table set up that shows me the total number of items that were bought from each of these companies. So you see in total, I've bought 620 items from Office Solutions and Pennsylvania has only uh, sold me 420 items. Let's see how we do that. So first of all, in this cell, I'm going to type in equals sum if, open my brackets, again, three uh, different arguments here. The first one is where am I looking? Well, of course, I'm looking at this column because I'm looking for a particular supplier. So what I'm looking for is the supplier. So the supplier will be found in this block. What is it that I'm looking for? Well, I'm looking in this case for Office Solutions. So as that name of the company appears in this cell here, I can simply click that cell. So that's F3. So if I find the text that's in F3 anywhere in this block, then what do I want to add up? Well, I want to add up the number of items which will be found in this column here. So this formula says, look for F3, that's Office Solutions, anywhere in these cells, and wherever you find it, add up the number in the column C. So we press the close brackets, press enter, and you'll see that Office Solutions has sold me 620. Now, of course, I could replicate this formula down, but that won't quite work. Uh, or sometimes it'll work. But what we're looking for here um, is to make sure that we have the formulas, the, the uh, cell references here, D3 and D14, not as a relative, but as absolute cell references. We always want to look at this block and at this block. So I'm going to press F4 to put the dollar signs before the D and the 3. Click in D14, press F4 again. That's an absolute cell reference. So wherever I replicate this formula, it will always look at that range. F3, of course, is going to change. As I drag this down, it'll be F4 and then F5. But the C to, uh, C3 to C14, again, this block here will always need to be the same. That's an absolute cell reference. So we'll put the dollar signs in there and press Enter. And now I can replicate that down. And you'll see in this case here, we're looking um, for F5, but still between D3 and D14 and C3 and C14. So that sum if formula has been able to tell me the number of items of equipment sold by a particular company. Let's have a look at one more example. And this is a household expenditure spreadsheet, quite a common thing here. So in this table, what I've got are the individual items that have been purchased. Uh, we've categorized them 
a lot of banks are doing this actually now online, uh, providing you a way of breaking down your expenses. So we can categorize the different types of expenses. Wine I've put down as food. Of course, you could argue that that could be entertainment or medical, um, but I've put that down as food. So we've got different categories there. And then of course, the amount of money that's been spent in each of those categories. So what I want to do now is to have a summary of how much we spent on entertainment, how much we spent on household, how much on medical, how much on uh, vehicle, and of course, how much on food as well, which shouldn't actually be a title. There we are. So how do we do that? Well, it's very similar, of course, to what we did before. First of all, I'm going to click next to food and I'm going to type in my equals sum if. What is it that I'm looking for? Or oh, sorry, where is it rather that I'm looking? Well, I'm looking in the category section here. I'm looking for the food category. So I will find it in that block of cells there. That's the first argument, comma. What is it I'm looking for? Well, here it is. I'm looking for food. So I could put that in speech marks. I could just write food here in speech marks like this. But of course, the, uh, the problem is I might type that slightly differently. Uh, I might write it with a different capital or something. So uh, because I've already got it written down here, it's easy enough just to click that cell. Then comma, if I find F2, that's food, in this block of cells here, then what is it I should be adding up? Well, I should be adding up the costs. How much money have I spent? So let's do D3 to D12, F2, and then, oops, that's slightly, let me just retype that. That's me clicking around. So let's start that one again. Sum F, looking for that category, that item, and that expense. There we are. Um, I can then press the close brackets. Again, I'll want to make these um, absolute cell references. So the range that I'm looking in is absolute. The range I'm adding up is absolute, but what I'm looking for in the middle will vary. That's relative to, to whatever these are here. Let's press enter. Uh, so you can see that I'm spending 340 pounds on food, on, uh, on groceries. Let's just uh, format that as a currency. So £340 on food, we can see that we've got the food category there, 284, food category there, 32, and food category there, uh, tea and coffee, 24. So 284, 32, and 24 added together make 340. Lovely. Let's try again then with food, uh, with entertainment. We can simply drag this down and replicate it for all of these, and we can see that the vehicle one is equal sum if, C3 to C13, that's where we're looking. F6, what we're looking for. And D3 to D13, what we're adding up. So you can see there that we've got three examples of how the sum if function can be really, really useful. Whether it is looking at adding up all of your profits, adding up all of the losses, uh, working out uh, the particular companies that have supplied particular items or the quantity of items, or whether we're working out categories of expenses, perhaps for a household uh, budget sheet that you're doing. Uh, the sum if function is a really, really good tool. Of course, you could then create a, a simple chart from, from this particular summary here, uh, which would be a really useful way of looking visually at how you are spending your money. So if we just, uh, make this a little bit larger so you can see this. Uh, there is my budget. So you can see the amount of money that I'm spending on food. It's about half of my income. Uh, entertainment, not too much. Medical, very little. Good. Vehicle, wow, that's expensive. Uh, perhaps I should look at uh, saving some money on my car. So I hope that's useful for you. If this was uh, new uh, to you, you weren't familiar with the sum if function and you feel that this is something that you could be using, please do give this video a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions or questions, uh, then do leave a comment below. I do read all comments. I do try to reply to all of them as soon as I can. And of course, if you've not subscribed to this channel yet, then please do so. Click the subscribe button. And if you click the bell as well, you'll be notified when I upload a new video. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Um, do click like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.